Hi, welcome to Inbound Explain. My name is Shannon. In today's video, we're gonna review how you can make a pop-up form in HubSpot. We'll go over how to choose the right form, all the different options you have in the form, and also how you can choose where your pop-up form appears. So let's go ahead and get started. To get started on creating your pop-up form, you first wanna to go to Marketing, Lead Capture, and then Forms. Then you're going to be taken to a page that looks something like this. And we're going to go over to the right hand side and click on create form. Now with your pop-up forms, you have a few different options within HubSpot. You have your classic pop-up form, which is the one that we'll be working on today. But you also do have in your drop down banner, which will take up the top uh, portion of the page. You have in your slide, you have your slide in left box and your slide in right box. The function of these forms, uh, work exactly the same. The only difference is that they just look a little bit different on the screen, depending on which one you choose. The one that we're going to go with today is the pop-up box, but just remember uh, everything we're talking about today can be applied to these different forms as well. So let's go ahead and press next. And then from here, this is where you can go ahead and create your form. So first, let's just go ahead and give it a name so we can say organized. So we'll call this the inbound explained pop-up form. Now from there, you have to decide what your form, what your pop-up form is going to be. Why are you creating a pop-up form? It's important to understand this before you create your form because it'll guide the decisions that you make as you create your form. Um, so in our case, let's just go ahead and say that we're creating a pop-up form uh, to be able for someone to be able to download an ebook. So in that case, probably you're going to want to have an image of that ebook. So you can go ahead and upload the image. If you have the image already saved within your HubSpot, you can uh, go ahead and choose the image uh, that you already have saved. If not, you can go ahead and upload the, the image from your computer. The next thing you want to do is you want to set up the, the, the call out text for your form. So this is a piece of text that people are going to see first. So it's going to be important. So let's say something like download our free, oops, our free ebook today. And then you can add in some additional text to give a little bit more context. So, um, we can say download our free ebook all about inbound marketing and HubSpot today. Obviously you want your text to be a little bit more creative, but you get the idea. <laughs> you can also edit the text on the button. So in our case, we're going to want to say download now, and we can also change the color too. So let's go with red. And as you can see, it's getting updated here. Now you have a few different options for what that button can do. So let's review each of them. If you do form step, what's going to happen is after somebody clicks on the button, they'll be taken to a form within the pop-up and you can set up the form here and we'll do that in just a second. You also have the option of adding in a non HubSpot URL. So um, let's say that you have your pop-up form so that people can go to a different web page, you can go ahead and add in the URL there. Uh, or similarly, if you want to take them to a page within your own website, you can go ahead and choose the page, or you can also paste the URL here as well. If you want to do a file download, like for example, we said we are going to make this form for an ebook, you can go ahead and add in the file here so that they can just directly download it after seeing the pop-up form. However, we can also add in this file download option after they filled out the form, which will be a, a bit more useful for an inbound marketing case. And we'll review how to do that after we, after we review the form. If this pop-up form is um, created with the intention of setting up a time to meet, you can set up your, your meeting link or similar, similarly, you can also do it with a calendar event as well. So you can set up, um, let's say that the form is a reminder for an upcoming webinar that you're going to have. You can add in the calendar event here and after they click on the button, they'll have the event added into their calendar. But let's just go ahead with probably the most common option, which would be the form step. So we want to make sure that's selected and then we're going to go up here to where it says form. Now we need to go ahead and set up the form that the users are going to fill out. 
First, you have the option of adding some text right before the form if you want. So you could say something like, fill out the form below to receive the free ebook. Oops. Then you can go ahead and add in the fields. Uh, with a pop-up form, you only have the option of adding in uh, four, four properties. So you have to choose them wisely. So, um, and email is always an automatic property and it's not one that you can get rid of. So in reality, you only have the option of three that you can choose. So you have to choose wisely. In this case, we know that we're gonna want their name and we're probably gonna want their last name too. And let's say that we also want to know what company they work for. Then you can go ahead and customize the order that they pop in or that they appear. So I just popped an email right under last name so that it will appear like that. Then we can select the, the text that the button will have. In our case, we still wanna say download now. And you have to select your GDPR um, options here. After they, after they fill out the form, once they press next, this is where you'll see the download now after they've agreed to your privacy agreement. You can set the language if you have your content or your website in multiple languages, and you also have to set the um, lifecycle stage that the users who fill out the form will be placed into after they fill out the form. You also have the option of adding in your CAPTCHA uh, for spam prevention. So after the users fill out the form, then you can set up a, um, a quick thank you message, uh, or you also have the option of uh, having a few more things happen. So all those options that we talked about uh, in the call out section also exist here. So in our case, we're gonna do file download. So we want our button to say download here because this is where people will click. And then um, we would just have to add in the file of the ebook that users can download once they click on the button. From there, you have a few different options. If you wanna send the, the contacts a follow-up email, you can uh, create that here. This will take you into the email tool. Uh, you can also set up the targeting of where this pop-up form is going to appear. So this is an important, an important aspect of the pop-up form because likely you don't want your pop-up form um, popping up everywhere, right? So for example, with the ebook example we've been talking about today, likely you already have a landing page created for that ebook that you're promoting using this pop-up form. So it wouldn't make much sense for this pop-up form to be popping up on that landing page, right? Because at that point, it'll just be a little bit of overkill. So you have the option of telling um, HubSpot when you do want the pop-up form to appear and when you don't want it to appear. So let's first talk about um, uh, pages on the website. So if you do want your page or your pop-up form to appear on a specific page, you can tell HubSpot that here. And then you can do add exclusion rule when you don't want your pop-up to appear somewhere. So let's say we don't want our pop-up our pop-up to appear on the landing page of the of the ebook. So we would say website URL contains is begins with or matches. Um, in this case, you could just do is, and then here you could just uh, copy and paste the URL of the of the ebook. You can also base your pop-up form on the behavior of your users as well. So. Um, Let's say that they are coming from a certain device. Maybe you don't want this pop-up form to appear on a, on a mobile device. Actually, we have to fix this. We would add the exclusion rule first, and we would go ahead and choose device type and mobile. So now this pop-up form will not appear on a mobile device because that could be a bit too intrusive. You can also set up certain triggers for the pop-up form. So um, with an actual classic pop-up form like this one, it's uh, normally you'll have this on the exit intent. So as somebody goes to exit out of the browser or exit out of the tab that they're currently in, this pop-up form will pop up in that moment. So it's kind of like a last a last effort to say like, hey, hey, look at me. You can choose that for, you can choose this option. You also have the option of doing on a 50% page scroll. So after the user has scrolled 50% of the page that they're on, the pop-up will appear. 
Or you can set up the pop-up to uh, appear after the user has been on the page for a certain amount of time. The different options will just kind of depend on the different purposes of the pop-up and what, what your goals of the campaign are. From there, you still have a few more options. If you are going to use the pop-up form for only a certain amount of time, so if, say, for example, you're using the pop-up form to promote a webinar that'll be live, you can actually schedule the pop-up form to start on a certain day and as well as stop on a certain date or you can just choose it to be an evergreen pop-up form. You can turn off the pop-up form on small screen sizes, which again is another, another useful tool, so it's not so intrusive for, for users that are working on a smaller screen. And then you have a few more options here of, of uh, what you can set up for your form. Again, it kind of all just depends on what exactly the purpose and the goal is for having the form. After you've done the work of setting everything up, you've set up your form, you've set up the, the thank you page, your follow-up, then you have the final option to preview what is the form going to look like, and you can actually test it out in real time. So you can go ahead and add in your name, you can add in all your information, and you can agree to the privacy uh, agreement, and you'll be able to see what it looks like after somebody fills up the form. Of course, I haven't done it yet, uh, but go ahead and try it out on your own, and you'll be able to see what it looks like. And you can also test it in different, in different uh, settings as well to see what it's going to look like. And as you can see, we turn it off for mobile. Then from there, uh, if everything looks uh, good on your end, HubSpot's saying that we have an error because we, we haven't added in that file for our ebook. But in your case, it should be good. If everything looks good, you'll be able to go ahead and publish your form and then it'll be live. So I hope this was able to help you today and I hope it was able to get you ready to start using the pop-up form feature in HubSpot. If you want to watch more HubSpot tutorials, go ahead and check out the playlist. If you want to see more videos about HubSpot tutorials or inbound marketing, go ahead and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.